Michelle Roulet specialize in prenatal, postpartum, and pediatric chiropractic care, along with prenatal and postpartum fitness and rehab. We're going to review today pelvic floor muscle relaxation. So I'm a really big fan of pelvic floor muscle activation, which I have another YouTube video on that you can view if you'd like to learn more about that, to help strengthen the pelvic floor both in quick responses but also with those long endurance holds. But just like any other muscle, if we're going to be activating that region, we also want to relax it as well. So imagine my bicep. If I'm doing this all day long and I'm really using my bicep and then I never get a chance to relax, that is going to end up with a dysfunctional muscle that has other issues beyond just needing strengthening. So we want to make sure that whenever we do muscle activations, then we also spend some time in our day on intentional muscle relaxation. A lot of people hold tension in their traps. Some people actually hold it in their abdominal wall or their pelvic floor. So we wanna give those people, if that's you, time to intentionally spend relaxing that region so we don't end up with an overly tight pelvic floor, which can have other issues in and of itself. A lot of people think of just pelvic floor weakness, but it can also be that there's pelvic floor tightness that is causing issues as well. I'm gonna give you a picture of the pelvic floor. So I want you to think about this whole pelvic bowl. So we don't have, we're gonna say pelvic floor muscles, not just muscle because it's multiple muscles. There's numerous ones that are around the vaginal canal, a bunch that are around the anus, and we really wanna make sure that we're gonna be relaxing all of these. Just like when we activate, we wanna make sure that we're activating them all, we wanna relax all these. One cueing can be imagine that your sits bones are spreading apart. That's these ischial tuberosities here, the, the bony part of your butt if you're sitting on somebody's lap or something like that. So really think about expansion here. So I just want to make sure you had a visual what the pelvic floor looked like so when we are talking about relaxation, you would understand where we are going. When we're working on relaxing the pelvic floor, it's also a good idea for us to open up our hips. So a lot of times our hips can be really tight, um, pelvis in general, so the glute muscles surrounding, the adductor groin region, the hamstring. So any stretches you know in that area can be useful, but we'll review a few opening of the pelvic and hip muscles as well in this video. The positions that I love the most for pelvic floor muscle relaxation are what I'm gonna to mention today, but not the only positions you can be in. You really can be in any position for this. The positions I'm gonna show you are gonna be the ones that help lengthen the pelvic floor while you're relaxing. So as opposed to having them shortened and then relaxing, it's in a lengthened, more stretched position or in a position that's really easy to relax the pelvic floor. So one is just coming into a tabletop, so coming here and relaxing. Whether or not you'd move your pelvis into tilts or not is different, but just holding here. Child's pose is also a really great one. It opens up your hips, but allows the pelvic floor to be in a really relaxed position. I also really like people to be in a position like happy baby, this really allows that pelvic floor and the pelvis on the bottom, those sits bones to widen. This also helps stretch that groin region, the adductors. So this can be a really great one as well to be in to relax pelvic floor. And then you may need pillows and it might need to be farther up in mind. I can flatten my, my flexibility allows my knees to touch the ground. That may not be you. So if you're kind of held here, we don't want you to be strained here. We want you to put pillows or yoga blocks underneath your knees so you can relax comfortably. This supine frog is also a really wonderful position to be in. And then lastly, another good position would be just butterfly. Let me scoot back a little bit. Seated butterfly like this. So all positions, we can figure out a way. These are just my favorite for relaxing the pelvic floor. Now what I want you to think about is the breath and what our breath pattern should be. So as we inhale, our diaphragm comes down, our, our, ribs, our, our rib cage expands, our lungs fill, and diaphragm lowers down. When that happens, we have a slight pressure down on the pelvic floor as that diaphragm lowers. And then on the exhale, the diaphragm comes up, and then the pelvic floor recoils a little bit. And it's this piston breath that goes back and forth each breath we do if we do proper breath, if we're not just doing chest breathing or belly breathing, if we do a real good rib cage breath, you can put your hands on the side of your rib cage here and do a full expansion. One on the front and on the back is also a good way. You feel your breath come into the front, feel your breath drive into your back as well. So with this rib cage diaphragm breath, you should feel your rib cage expanding and then your belly will go along for the ride, but we don't want to just go 
and drive the breath solely into our belly. So the breath's gonna be important for our relaxation because what we're gonna do is on the inhale, I want you to think about pelvic floor, the air that you're inhaling is pushing into that pelvic floor. It's driving into it to relax it. So the pelvic floor at no point during this exercise will activate up like a Kegel, pelvic floor muscle activation, nor will it press out as if you're going to try to be really fast. It's not gonna be either, it's gonna be going into a neutral zone. So when that air comes in to fill the pelvic bowl, it's gonna be a nice gentle inhale and push to relax the pelvic floor. So I shouldn't even really use push because it's not a pressure outward. It's just an inhale that helps expand the pelvic floor. The sits bones are pulling out, that bowl is opening up and those muscles are elongating. So I'm gonna come into supine frog for demo, but again, you can be in tabletop, you can be in butterfly seated, you can be in happy baby, or child's pose, those are all wonderful positions to work on relaxing the pelvic floor muscles. I like people to spend two to five minutes a day working on intentional relaxation. So here I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna think about my pelvic floor relaxing, I'm gonna do nice good uh, rib cage diaphragm breath, so I'm gonna inhale. Pelvic floor is expanding and opening, the air is driving in there, <sighs> exhale. On the exhale, the pelvic floor will naturally recoil a little bit. We just don't wanna do a full activation. So if you wanna move through different positions, you can, do an, you can do 10 inhales and exhales here, switch to happy baby, do 10 here, come into child's pose. Another cue that can be really wonderful other than you just thinking about your air that you inhale filling up that pelvic bowl is thinking about the anus as as a flower blooming. So not pushing out where you're gonna have a toot or, or anything else happen, but just a slight expansion open. So flower blooming, it's a weird visual, but it can be helpful for those who are struggling to release those sphincters. And if you can release the anus, it's a lot more likely that the, the sphincter around the vaginal canal will also relax. So imagine that flower blooming, and that can be a nice visual as well as you're working on practicing this. You may not be wonderful initially with this relaxation of the pelvic floor if you're used to gripping on, but you'll eventually get into the pattern of it. So other things you can do while you're on the ground to open up your hips is you can pull your knees to your chest. You can rock back and forth, or you can just pull them up, and then you can do circles around, which can kind of massage your low back. Nice big circles as you hold onto those knees. You can raise your legs up and do happy baby and you can gently rock back and forth as well in this position you can bring your legs down and do windshield wipers where you drop them here as far as they'll go and then the opposite direction you can bring your legs out so you're not happy baby you're not pulling them in you're kind of out to the side in this type position. And then you can think about circles as if you're stirring the pot. You can just go side to side. Various positions and movements you can get in just to open up the hips. So there's also butterfly that you can stretch in. You can work on your hamstrings. You can come into a position where you can get into your glutes where you do a zigzag position here and you can lean forward to get into your glutes a little bit more. There's a lot of variety you can do just for opening up the hip and the pelvis in general. And then there's the pelvic floor muscle relaxation itself that you can work on. So again, I really encourage you to spend two to five minutes or so on really relaxing the pelvic floor muscles in the different breathing um, positions that I gave you to be in. And then really practicing that inhale coming into the pelvic bowl and really just spending time on intentionally letting that pelvic floor release, not pressing out, not pulling in, being in a neutral kind of stretched but relaxed position. So again, this is because we don't want to do too much tightening. We want to spend time learning to allow the pelvic floor that does a lot of work to relax. So this is pelvic floor muscle relaxation.